Oh. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm back. And yes, I am preparing to do some more sculpting tonight. This time, the fourth of the Outside X Crews D&D characters. By the way, I printed two of them the other day. They're currently stuck on top of old paint bottles, because, you know, handles to hold on to while painting. And I've given them a lick primer. They were printed on my uh, Anycubic Photon using the default resins. And just to show you, they came out absolutely amazing. Beautifully. Even that little feather on his cap. It's kind of hard to see, but you can even... You know, it's even got the details in the feather. So yeah, any cubic photon, awesome. Put these back in here. Uh, her. I haven't painted them yet because number one, I'm waiting to finish all five at the same time. And number two, I'm also waiting on a whole new set of paints to show up. So anyway, Today's sculpt is a... It's Mike's character. It's a rather common style of character. It is... Just a basic dragonborn warrior. And I'm, I'm thinking that the gray is supposed to be male with a outer coat. And hello, Mantis. See so yeah, a shield. A little bit of kneecaps. And biker gloves looks like. But yeah, that's the basics of what I am sculpting today. Give them my, a couple touches of my own, if you will. So. And hey, you mind, Mixer? Oh! I think y'all missed it. I got a couple of the ones from the previous in this series. Uh, print it out. Let me bring them up here and uh, adjust the focus. See, you can you can make out the kitty on top of her head. Yeah. You, know, you can make out his uh, eye patch. Even the uh, throwing daggers on his uh, uh chest bandolier. Well, thank you, Joseph I. Joseph Hi One. Joseph I Home. I do not have a bot other than just, you know, automatically put in links into the chat, but I will get one soon, maybe, if I can ever figure out how to do it, because, yeah. Meanwhile, let me turn the focus down. There we go. You may notice that the, the bed is empty. She's outside in the, in the living room. She wanted to pest her mom tonight. The cat is not dead. Don't worry. She's 12 years old and she thinks she's 5. So, we're going to be making, effectively, a Dragonborn Warrior. Paladin, Warrior, whatever. Let's go ahead and kick over. And of course, we got Dad's studio here. And the first thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to make him Dragonborn. Burp. Now, he's qu not quite so muscular as the, uh, the default. So we're going to tone him down. Oh, wrong way. We're going to tone down the muscularity quite a bit here. Yeah, there we go. That's good enough. Now, we need to go ahead and... What the heck? All 
hold on a second. It's not behaving. What the heck? You th What happened here? Okay, um, it's looking like I'm gonna have to restart Daz Studio. Yay. <laughs> oh, yay. So back to here I go for a moment while I restart Daz Studio. Yes. Programs do that sometimes. Yay. And when they do, a good reboot just usually cures it. You know, kicks it. Let's kick it up a notch! Yeah. Go figure. You know? One thing I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to assume that the lighter gray areas are, are chain mail. Yeah, there we go. That's better. People. Need to base Geo. Let's summon him first. Now, as we can see, he's got a, like a little tunic part. So we're going to put the tunic part on. Uh, for weapons, he's carrying what looks like a standard flanged mace. So, I happen to have... Where's the M? Mace. Yeah, it's going to be in his right hand. This kind. You know, with the, the, the classic look to the head. It's got a round shield, but it's going to be altered significantly. So, we're going to... Put the shield on. And now we're going to take him in, going to races. We're going to Dragonborn him up. And we're going to modify that muscularity just for this figure. We're going to demusculify him a little. Just a little. Okay. And there we have. Now, he's also described as being six foot exactly. So, I clicked in the middle here. I'm loading in another human figure for the sole purpose of making sure that I can shrink him down to about the size we want. So, he's right, needs to be right about the size of that guy. Yeah. So, where the average Dragonborn is like six four, six five. He's like right at six foot. Now, we're going to take the shield. We're going to kind of bend it back closer to the arm. And, um, oh, yeah, it would help if I went back to, yeah, there we go. Anyway, but just for a second, we look at the pose in the drawing. And it's just a basic kind of crouched, legs bent, hands bent. Yeah, kind of boring. So we're going to give him a little bit more dynamic than that. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with the hip. We're going to bend his hip back a little bit. Bend it like that. That's a bit, that might be a bit too much. We're going to bend this leg out and side to side a little bit. Just a little bit. And bend the leg. Okay, so that tells me we need to twist it a bit more. We're going to unbend it a bit and unside to side it a bit. 
and twist it a bit. Oh, wrong one. Twist. Yeah. Because see what we're going to do is we're going to have him kind of cocked back with the mace kind of back to behind him. And then to be honest, it's usually a little difficult to move, to actually move, bend your thigh backwards very much more than a few degrees. Usually when you've got your thigh bent backwards, your hips are cocked forward. So now that we've got this in relative position, we're going to the front view so that we can get this foot flat. And once we've got it flat, we're going to bend up the toe quite a lot so we can drop to the ground and we have an exact line for the ground so we can see where we want to make this. So it's going to unbend the leg just a little bit too much. We're going to bend the foot a little and unbend the toe a little. And I'm going to unbend the calf to about there. Now we're going to twist the foot so it's mostly flat. And we're going to bend it just a little bit more because it's still going too low. There we go. Now we go back to our perspective view. Okay, I see a problem. I need to twist this leg a bit more. And the shin needs to get twisted. Now once again, always remember, never have the hips and the uh, shoulders parallel to each other or the ground. Okay. Now, the abdomen and chest. They, you'll notice that they often tend to bend or twist together. So, side to side. We're, but we're going to bend the chest. Ah, keep trying to do it side to side, and it keeps popping back the other way. We're going to bend just the chest forward. We need to bend the abdomen back a bit. Maybe not quite so much. It's Let's make sure that it's got a clearly curved, yeah, clear curve to the spine there. And the neck, we're going to bend back and twist so it's quite clear where he's looking now we do the arms it's already a really dynamic pose here I really like how it's coming out okay the shoulder we're not going to drop the shoulder we're going to bring it f forward a bit and then we're just going to bend the uh, forearm, not quite so much. And we're going to twist it a little. So that's more clearly in a defensive posture. Now, my standard prop for weapon poses. We. So, out like that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Checking the arm pose for that. Yes, it is a, th a thing to, to, to check the pose by actually assuming the pose. Now we're going to bend this ever so slightly, but we're going to side to side the hand. We're going to twist the wrist and twist the upper arm. And let's let's check the uh, the front view. Let's, let's go ahead and frame. He's a little off balance front, so we go to back view. Frame. Yep, we're gonna we're going to pin. Both translation and rotation on both feet. It's not perfect, but it's better than it could be. Then we're going to select the, t the hip. Um, kind of move it forward slightly. And then... We're going to move it backwards slightly now. Perspective. Yeah, there we go. It's looking pretty good. The next thing we're going to do... Actually, we're going to do one further thing. We're going to twist that thigh out. There we go. Now, we're going to unpin all. The next thing... Each has an equivalent thigh in the uh, the tunic bottom we're going to untwist those so the left thigh has a twist of 60.65 so the left thigh in this will have negative 60.65 this helps us get a better cohesion on the model when it comes time the right thigh is a negative 49.64, so this will be straight up 49.64. And you see how the, the tunic part now looks a lot more relaxed, even though you've still got the thigh and that poking through. We're going to fix that when it comes time. Actually, let's go ahead. Left thigh. We're going to bend backwards just a little. There we go. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Back to work. 
Okay, so we got this. Well, goodbye, Mantis. So anyway, back to here. Might want to move the thigh side to side, or the right thigh side to side just a little bit to try and, yeah, there we go. Anyway, this is our basic pose. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide the shield. Excuse me. The mace and the tunic trunks. We're going to export. Actually, there's one thing we do need to do. We need to X scale the hips just a little bit. And X scale the abdomen just a little bit. Oh, not scale. X scale. Because he was losing some mass in those bends and we don't want him to. Okay. So now, file, export, and we're taking this to outside Xbox. This is mic body. Mason shield. File export Mike props. Yes, Mike is the name of the guy who plays Egbert the Careless. And then close these and the skirt. File export Mike tunic. Accept. So now we're going ahead and closing a couple things in here. The next step is to go to ZBrush. Yes, I know. Normally I have the little star thingy in here, but someone had mentioned that they were kind of questioning how it's supposed to go. This is just a blank empty canvas. Over here on the left, you'll see where it has Polymesh 3D. I click on it. I click in here, and I drag. I then move my camera. Well, no, not, not this. This stays where it is. I move my camera out of the way. So you can see right up here is a button called Edit. Now I suddenly have a small f inner frame and I can manipulate the uh, project. Well, the way to manipulate that is import. And then I go to outside Xbox and mic body. Then I go ahead and I append another Polymesh 3D, the little star, make sure I select it, import my props, and then append Polymesh 3D, import my tunic. And we've got the parts in here. Now the thing is, there's a couple things I need to do before anything else. I need to take the tunic and move it up one. You see this little arrow that goes up and over? I click that and it moves up above. But before I do that, I need to come in here and I actually need to shrink down the mouse a little and smooth out the chest because he is going to be wearing a tunic. And yes, the stomach as well. I'm then going to... Oh, come on. There we go. I'm going to use inflate. Make sure stroke is turned off. Does not have a lazy mouse. Good. Shrink it a little bit. Make the mouse a bit bigger. Because I took away some of its overall mass with that particular pass of the smooth tool. I'm just kind of building it back up. Uh, 
we're going to do the same thing. Well, we don't need to over here. All right. So now we're going to hide the props. Uh, smooth it just a little bit more on the pectorals. And inflate it just a little bit more as well. Now, one other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be having to make his feet have talons, but that will come later on, probably about the same time I do the hands. So, now, we go down to the tunic, and we're going to just simply subdivide it a few times till it's a couple hundred thousand polygons. Then we're going to the main figure, and we're going to subdivide it a couple times until it's about, yeah, 1.4. Delete lower. And then we're going to go down here to merge down. And now the props are a separate piece, and we can go to geometry. I said we can go to, ge there we go, and Dynamesh, resolution of 768, and a blur of zero. Dynamesh! We oh no I forgot to do one thing I need to I forgot to open the mouth in the uh, Jazz Studio so No, too big. Still too big. And I need to come here and kind of blend that part of the lip. Maybe move, maybe shrink it down and move a little bit like there. Okay, now frame out. The basic pose. Now that we are in, we have dynameshed it, I come in here and smooth out. Wait a minute. We haven't dynameshed it. 768, 0. Dynamesh. There we go. Come over here and I start smoothing out the areas where it becomes one with the tunic bottom, including the buttocks. I really need to fix the butt on this figure. It's just really not that great. And blend these over, and blend this over. Once again, you'll see that I am using the mouse and not my tablet for this. <coughs> because my throat is full of phlegm. Uh, because when doing this particular t thing, I want the full bore blend. And like I said, this is like a rattle can spray paint. You know, where they it has 100% power on all the time. Whereas, using the tablet is like using an airbrush where you have a variable amount coming out depending on how hard you're pressing the... And smooth that, because that also needs to kind of be a little bit less oomphy. Okay. Now. A little bit of soda. One of the first things we're going to do, before we do anything else, we're going to draw his top collar. No, no we're not. That's going to come last. See, one thing about him is, oh yeah, I see another thing we've got to do. He has a wrinkle right here that can smooth out. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to make his belt. Okay. Now that means I gotta shrink this just a little. Break out the stylus, and we're gonna follow this particular arc on his waist. And I forgot to turn the focal shift. hiding that part of the arm just to make it easier to get and making it visible again and yes my plan is to actually print these out paint them and send them to the outside X crew as kind of like fan art I'm removing that because there was a section that overlapped badly. Just like that! No! Okay, let me... No, not move. Zoom. I'm going to shrink the mouse quite a bit so I can... clean that up. Clean that up a bit. Okay, now we frame out. And we go to Subtool. We're going to extract it at 0 0.04. Accept. And there. Now we're going to frame just to make sure we can see it. Shrink this and blend out these dotted bits. And then in geometry we're going to dynamish it at 256. We are going to leave it like this because the next step we're going to have to make first there's going to be a large mantle that will fit over his shoulders that has what looks like a hood hanging down. Then there will be a tabard and then there will be upper sleeves. The hood will cover pretty much everything here. So it's not going to be a huge problem. So. And hello crazy and square peg. Yes, I am making a Dragonborn fighter type. What I'm going to handle this is I'm going to draw the entirety of the hood first. Or entirety of the mantle. Then I'm going to add on another piece that will be the hood. The, the collapsed hood. And this is going to go kind of high up over the back of the neck. And then coming down from here. And coming across like that. That's lock this in uh oh missed a spot yeah make sure I didn't miss any other spots I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit more in the back having worn a hood like this before or a mantle like this before they do tend to hang lower in the back all right now we're going to extract this at point zero 0.03. Accept. 
draw, draw, and then geometry Dynamesh at 256, Dynamesh. Now, next thing we're going to do is this one is actually going to get subdivided. Should be good enough because this is where I'm going to draw on the part that's going to be the hood. So the thing is, I'm going to end up dragging it down to be a little bit. I'm going to be uh, working on it to drag it down a little to make it be a bit more weirdy. Okay, and then let's go ahead and blend it in. Now, if y'all have not watched the game channel, the well, it's admittedly it's computer game, not bit not uh, tabletop game outside extra or its parent channel outside xbox well it's on first glance it looks like just another one of those list channels but they are kind of funny like seven reasons why link is secretly doom guy or vice versa whichever one it was and now we're going to extract that one This one, however, is only going to be Dynamesh at 128. And what we're going to do is we're going to smooth the edges. We're then going to use Move Topological. Yes, move topological. Oh, I've already got move topological selected. Ha! And making it bigger. Pull out just a bit. And then shrinking it so that we can pull the innards back in. And then I'm going to use the inflate tool. To give it a bit more depth. We're going to get to detail in this when it gets to be time. When it gets to be time to do the wrinkling. Now let's go back to move topological and shrink it down again. We're going to grab these corners and kind of pull them into the uh, and kind of blend them in. Like this one right here. Okay, let's grab that and kind of move it inside. Yeah. Then we're going to use where is it? Slash. There you are, slash. Add turn up turn the intensity down lit a lot. Turn off lazy mouse. Not more. Resharpen this edge. Let's clean that spot up right there. Oh, no. That's the use move. And then we're going to standard sub turn off lazy mouse. And we're going to uh, make it bigger. 
dip it down. The reason for this is that this way it will look like the opening for the hood. In fact, let's go ahead and hide Mr. Big Shot and the mantle. And then we're going to smooth out this inner section here. So that when we have the mantle back, that it definitely looks more like the inside of a hood. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and subdivide it a couple times. That's good enough. And we're going to merge the mantle and the hood. Okay, we have the mantle and the hood. Now we're going to be eventually moving these because we've got to have room for the uh, tabard. Now the tabard, we're also going to be moving parts of the belt for. And once again, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit larger here. We can be kind of sloppy up on the upper portion, but not so much on the lower. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take it, actually this is more of a, if I remember correctly, this is more of a vest than a true tabard. I'm going to have to double check the art here in a minute. and bits. I'm going off to the side for one reason, so I can clean it up to a sharp corner. Looking at the concept art, hmm. Yeah, it's actually really weird. It's it looks more like it's an outer tunic on top of his mail. That kind of has a gap starting below the belt. Everyone knows you never go below the belt. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then... We've got a little bit of this visible underneath. And we fill in all of this. Yay. I feel like I'm doing an adult coloring book, except that it's not very adult. And let's make sure that the mantle covers the top and bottom. Yes, it does. Excellent. This is going to be extracted at 0 0.02. Accept. Draw. Draw. Now one thing we're going to do, we're going to grab our mantle with our 
move topological and we're going to drag it out a bit to make sure that it's got a clear line of demarcation over top of the uh, tunic thing. I'm going to do it back here too. But we're going to do it with regular move, not move topological because we have to worry about the hood also. Okay. Now we go back to our new vest. And we're going to do something similar. Well, actually, before we do anything similar, we've got to dynamesh it at 256. Anyway, then we're going to, like I said, we're going to grab it here. We're going to pull it out a bit. to make it very obvious that it's clothing. And it's going to be moving with the body. I'm going to take the bottom and pull it back out a bit. Not a huge amount because what's going to come next is inflate. The reason for the inflate is to make sure that the bottom part fuses back in a bit. Okay, and then come up, make the rest of the arm visible. Oh yeah, I gotta be on the the dude subtool. Frame. And the belt. Okay, so one last thing to do here is we can take slash Z sub about fifteen. Shrink it down a bit up there and draw up and hit one then smooth out here see add see sub there we go yeah, smooth that just a little. Okay. Get a little bit of so soda real quick. Now another thing he's shown to be wearing is knee pads. So we're going to go ahead and draw them in. Go back to our uh, main body. And just kind of draw on some little bits we're gonna well, we're gonna we're gonna negative space these knee pads to make them look a bit more teardroppy that means is we're gonna draw large blotches on the legs and then we're gonna use con the alt button to erase part of these make those corners a lot cleaner. Actually I need to redo that because that one did that one went too far in. Okay, so there we go. 
And then come from here and come down. Not that large, but then again, they're not displayed as large at point zero three. Export or extract, accept, draw, draw. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use Geometry Dynamax of 256 because we want to keep it a little bit sharp. And then subdivide it a couple times, delete lower. I'm then going to make an add slash very low but large. Because I'm going to put a sharp slash across this in the center. Not too strong. That's that's too strong. Actually, no. We're going to use a standard brush, but we're going to zoom it out quite a lot. Oh, I'm going to add. No. Draw a ridge down the center, basically. And then I draw a ridge straight down. Make it clear that these are armor plates and not... you know, clothing or something. Then I'm going to shrink the mouse again, bring that focal shift to zero, and zoom in. I'm going to smooth the areas on the inside corners of these because what that will do is that will help me make it look less like lines and more like ridges. Just a brief brush over. Now, Thursday, I will be doing the last of these. It's a Tiefling Warlock with Impala Horns. And, yes, he is your archetypical evil Tiefling, sociopathic, but at the same time tries to be a femme fatale and kind of can pull it off. Now we're going to level, not uh, layer. Layer, layer. Because what we're going to do with these is draw on scrap. Is that high enough? No, that's not high enough. So we're going to take it up to 91. Now we need to make it a little bit bigger. There we go, that's all I gotta do. Uh, 
and then yeah that's good enough we'll, we'll be back over here to smooth that out here in just a second well, actually let's go ahead and take care of it now Okay. He's not wearing boots, which is quite funny. This one actually does actually... Yeah. Okay, too small. So we'll go back to here, about there. Okay. Now. The next thing we need to do, we need to hide the mantle and the... And the uh, that. Looking at the picture again, he does not have full sleeves on his uh, hauberk. In fact, they're not visible under the uh, vest. So instead, we're going to smooth out the uh, pectoral muscle area. And we'll be drawing on pauldrons simple cheap basic pauldrons like he couldn't afford larger better fitting ones but pauldrons so we're going to have the best visible but not the mantle okay so according to the, the sketch it's a simple pauldron with a second lame lames are the parts that move under but those that lame is so small it may as well not be there I'm gonna make the pauldrons just a little bit bigger than they are in the sketch and we're also going to sharpen them a bit Once again, we're going to end up moving the mantle over these. a little bit and then let's just shrink it down before we trim it
Okay, and then And now we extract them at point zero three. Now, before we do anything else, we get to our move. Well, no, move. Make it bigger. And move it out from the pauldron. And on this side, too. There we go. Now, the pauldrons are pretty much almost exactly as they look in the drawing. 256 Dynamesh. Subdivide it a couple times, delete lower. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to use a slash line, a very small, moderately deep slash line to draw the edge of the trim. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to once again hide the mantle so we can draw better. Make this a little bit smaller. And we're going to just dig deep and one. Actually, no, it's too much. We need to make. We need to be coming from here. One, and then just a little bit here. there. That gives us the look we want. Okay, so coming from here. And then from here. This way. Come up this way. Okay. That's the that's that. And we seem to have lost some people, but oh well. I can deal with it. Now. One of the things we're going to do next, we're going to hide the vest. Well, almost hide. We've got to do one last thing on the vest. We're going to hide the arm. How many times have I done that? Today. Dang it. And I'm going to draw in a larger and slightly deeper, but similar slash line. First, I'm going to mark this. Okay. Good. Now that'll be four is in here will be male. 
That's not to say anywhere else be female, but in here will be male. Now the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to standard. I've also got to hide the belt for this. I'm going to alpha. Alphas are strange. And I'm going to Actually, I know what I'll do. Besides apparently crash Seabrush. There we go. I'm going to mask. Everything down here. Actually, better not. I know what I'll do. Let's bring that on. I'll mask everything up here. See, I have an alpha that is just a patch of chainmail. Alright. Now... I am going to invert the mask. Then I'm going to import an alpha. Where did I put it? No. Okay, make this bigger. I go up and I add stroke to my toolbar over here. And I go to lazy mouse. Lazy step of 1.25. And this too much. That's a uh, 0.08. I'm going to increase the intensity by quite a bit. Oh, no, not 0 0.08. 0 0.8. Okay, I know what I got to do. Layer first. Z sub. Lay some mouse off. and then smooth it all. Excellent. Now, I go back to standard. I increase the intensity a good bit more and a little bit bigger and I Let's make it a little bit deep. And then do the same thing up here. Oh, no. And then just to see what it looks like with the okay there we go 
very clearly chainmail, very cleanly chainmail. Shrink this just a little bit and smooth out the bottom edge here between the links. Okay, now this might be the end of part one. Okay, it, it, I just had an, a, a network error. Okay, good. Phew. Phew. Okay, looking again at the image, he does not have bracers. He does have gloves, which is kind of odd. He has fingerless gloves in the drawing. It'd probably be better just to go ahead and give him ordinary gloves in this. So let's make the mouse a bit bigger again. And I'm going to mask off this part of the wrist. And, and I'm going to do the same thing down here where the other wrist is. Actually, there's an easier way with this wrist. I get it as straight as I can. And just now let's zoom out okay I'm going to extract these at point zero 0.02 because they need to be a little bit thinner extract accept draw and draw and now we go in here frame them Rotate it around just a bit. Now these are going to be dynameshed at 128. And then we're going to smooth here. Just enough to push it in a little. what this is for is this will help us turn this wrist into a cuff we're now once we've got the basics of it down we're going to divide it a few times delete lower and we're going to merge down then we're going to go back to geometry and Dynamesh it again. Then smooth out the wrists to emphasize that these are gloves. Okay. And to the other side. Let's do these. Once we've done that, it's time for the feetsies. All right, soda time. It is 9.15. Okay. Now the feet, according to the drawing, have three toes. It's a three-toed dragonborn. So we're going to do that. What we're going to do 
So we're going to start with a slash. And we're going to shrink it a bit. And make sure that the uh, Dynamesh is turned off, or Lazy Mouse is turned off. And I'm going to draw one big slash here and one big slash here. Then I'm going to use move topological to kind of drag a sharper bit out. Smooth the bottom of it. And then kind of drag the bottoms of these down so that they're going through where the base will be. Okay, that should be good. Now, I'm going to do the same thing over here. See, I normally would do more, but even with uh, resin, it's not that much of a big deal. And burp, burp. Now, I'll go back to move topological. And mm -hmm. I'm going to inflate these just a little bit just on the underside here to make sure that it goes into the base and doesn't doesn't provide a gap okay there's our toes frame out now we have three things left to do three not two three um, detail the hands Add wrinkles to the clothing and tweak the shield to look more like the kind of turtle shell thing that he's holding in the picture. So, you got about 15 minutes for each. That's more than enough. Let's go to the hands first. Since we're already working on the base geo of the body. Alright, first things first. Let's get to where we can see the thumb. Since we're at inflate, and let's inflate that thumb. Okay. Now, let's make sure the mouse is about the size, or the cursor is about the size of the fingers. need a little bit higher intensity yeah, a novel here novel there novel there novel there and draw oh no start from here draw 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 your tendons then we have our we can see where our first finger is so we're going to make our knuckles based on those uh, on that rather and then make them equal on the ring smaller on the pinky and bigger on the middle actually Need to get rid of that one entirely and kind of move a little bit further forward. Not a lot more, but 
you're a little bit too far back. And then to here. See, as often as I harp on the hands are important, I have actually forgotten to do them on more than one occasion. One, two, three, four. Make it bigger here. And there. And smooth it. Yeah. And you can already tell a huge difference between the two hands. So now we zoom in on here. I shrink by four. And I kind of inflate in here. Oh. I inflate in here. And on the inside in here. Now like most sealed hands, this one won't be as visible, but we're still going to do it. It doesn't do to get sloppy. We're not going to do the tendons on the back of the hand, but we're going to do the knuckles. Getting sloppy is, is bad. I freely admit to having occasionally gotten sloppy, and I regret every time I do. And then smooshed, 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 smooshed. Smoosh it, smoosh it, smoosh it, smoosh it, and then smoosh it, smoosh it, smoosh it, smoosh it. And then one, two, three, four, and smooth it. Now the next thing we do is we slash them. One, two, three, four. C sub fourteen. And a one. Okay. And then the finger joints or finger separation over here. I'm gonna do this part separate from the rest. And then I have here. So first I'm gonna come up from here. No. Okay. Oh. Next is wrinkles. And the only place the wrinkles will really be seen are on the mantle and the tunic. Well the tunic will come first. We're gonna have to turn on our belt so I can see them. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a standard brush without the alpha with lazy mouse turned off. And turn it back down to about 10. 
now I'm going to draw on just some kind of diagonal lines to represent the torsion. I need to make them a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. I need to represent torsion of the belt. Anyway, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our slash tool and we're going to first draw under each of these wrinkles near the top. Then, inside each of these wrinkles, a little bit down from the top, and smooth out the bottom. I missed on the lower side of things. And the reason for this is because these wrinkles become two. Then I go back to add, I shrink this down quite a bit and I draw edges in the bottom of the wrinkles and edges there and yes this does mean I'm eventually going to have to move part of this directly under the belt and I'm gonna hide the body because he's getting in the way yeah okay and then we're going to do something similar, but a little bit less dynamic up here. Just a burr, 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 burr. Four quick lines, and then one, two, three, four. And go back to slash, sub, 13. And just kind of draw in the middle of them. And then add back to eight and kind of draw the underside of these wrinkles and then an occasional zigzag front in open spaces.
and that's our wrinkles. Well, let's add a little bit here. Make him visible again. Right. Now while we're at it, we're going to use move topological, make it bigger. And we're just going to kind of move this down under the belt. Make sure it goes under the belt. There. Any other spots? Yeah, right about here. Okay. Now the next part is the hood, but the hood has one small problem. The hood needs to be dynamashed. And then subdivided. Because the hood has the hood. Now we're going to use slash to go deep under the hood to really emphasize the hoodiness of the hood. Hoodie hood. Hood, 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 hood. Not to be confused with HUD, which is a heads up display. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a standard brush. We're going to draw on some loops, some loops that kind of fade. And then here comes down there. And there. And we're going to draw kind of a uh, wrinkly bit there. These are mostly just kind of showing direction and showing a few other things. And we're going to take our slash tool, add at about 10, we're going to slash on the bottom third of each of these wrinkles to help them emphasize what they are and at the bottom of the hood to help emphasize the difference between the hood and the mantle. There's any number of ways to draw any given thing in ZBrush, Sculptress, what have you. But you'll usually f come across a, a method that works best for you. I should note that I do not know how much of this will work in other sculpting programs. Simply because I've never used them. And I'm going to just sharpen the underside of some of these wrinkles not a lot but just a bit to kind of emphasize that they're wrinkles and not just weird peaks I'm also going to smooth out the top of this one yeah Okay, now I frame out. And about the only thing left to do on him is his shield. And so one thing I'm going to do is first I'm going to subdivide the shield. Or subdivide the whole entirety of this. Because if we want, whoa, not dynamesh, subdivide. 
and then I'm going to mask off the shield and we are going to split masked parts. This puts the shield on itself. Now what we're going to do with this, first things first, we're going to make the mouse about the same size as the shield. Then we're going to use move topological from mostly above. We're going to grab as close to the center as we can and Now, we need to focal shift it a bit. Yeah. And bring it out. And then bring it over a little bit. And we're going to bring it out some more. Then we're going to focal shift it even more. Make it a little bit bigger. Grab it in the center. Move it out a bit more. And then we're going to smooth the center of it. Now, going back to slash, because we need to make some scale differentiations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply draw some slashes around the rim. Then, I'm going to use move topological at this size, but with a focal shift of zero, to grab edges and pull them up to be kind of sharp scutes. Then, let's go back to slash. I said, let's go back to slash. Thank you. I'm going to kind of draw a little bit of a and draw them across like this and across like this like this. Now I'm going to grab move topological, make it a little bit bigger, pull up on all of them. And we have a very scaly looking shield. Shrink this down and pull, pull these a bit in to kind of exaggerate the uh, overlap. Okay, now we frame out. And I think the only thing left to do, actually, now that I look at it, Besides getting some short prop. Just to go ahead and select this dude. And let's zoom in on the head. We're going to hide 
the mouth. Why? Oh, and everything else. Especially that darn seal. Now, why am I hiding the mouth? Because I need to inflate the mouth, the inner mouth, so that it fuses. And becomes easier to print. And now there. The next thing is his drawing has him having spikes down the back of his head. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna just gonna grab and drag a couple. Just a couple. And down on this side, let's... We're going to plate those in a minute. And then... Okay, now, with, inf with inflate, let's kind of inflate that, and that, and that, and that. And then drag them a bit more, because we want them to be a little bit larger, because of... Mm-hmm! Dad, come! There! Because we want them to be a little bit larger, they're the ones in the back center. Okay, now we frame out. Make that sealed visible. Select the sealed and smooth out these areas that got some pokey going on. Gumby, gumby, pokey, pokey. Okay. I forgot. And the pauldrons. Now, we're going to merge down and frame it and zoom out just a little bit. Here is Mike, aka Egbert the Careless. Now, we're going to add one more thing. I have to append a base. I'm going to select that base, frame, base, zoom out, and the first thing we got to do is subdivide a little bit because, you know. And then we've got to move it. So we offset by Y first gonna go 10 and 1, 2, 3. Yeah, about there. Then we're gonna have to move it by X. Okay, good. And then finally, by Z. And then X again. And then Z again. Yeah, that's about right. And I've got to do one last thing on him. I've got to move a tiny little toe bone right there. Toe bean. Go bye-bye. There. Now, frame the whole thing. 
zoom out and I can put the tablet up because we have Egbert the Careless. He's a little bit more heroic looking than the concept art, but I think he'll he, I think he can live with that. So, now that we've done that, we go we merge down one last time to make it one full piece. And we Dynamesh at 760. The reason for this will come clearer. Dynamesh! And we now have 1.905 polygons. Way too hot. So instead we need to reduce that. So we zoom in. First things first, we need to kind of polish off this torso a little because the polygon count wasn't high enough. And this will help us smooth out some of that visible polys. Yes, I do not like visible polys. I, I don't like low polygon sculpts. It feels like I could have done more if I see them on a figure of mine. Anyway. So now, let's go back. I have my to do that. And we zoom out a little frame. And now, let's open up the Z plugin. And under Decimation Master, we're going for the 35K button. We click it, and we hope that we end up with 70,000 polygons. Analyzing mesh. Oh, battery dead. So yeah, we're going from 1.9 million, nearly 2 million polygons, to about 70,000. If this goes well. And it looks like it's going well. file to disk and we have 70,144 polygons okay now we're gonna go ahead and export this back into the outside Xbox as Egbert careless figure Whee! and he's ready to be sent to the Votan once I finish Jane's figure okay so we now go ahead and head back to this Thank you, Mr. Square Peg. Ah. Now, next question for you is Do you play Warhammer 40K? Odd question, I know. Well, you hear people talking about the Bolter rifle, the standard rifle for the Space Marine. 
and they talk about how it shoots off Red Bull, ca you know, bullets the size of a Red Bull can. They're wrong. It doesn't. It's described as 75 caliber. Okay. The standard Space Marine rifle is 75 caliber. That's still honking huge. But let's see. 75 caliber is 75% of an inch. That big around. A little bit smaller than a bolter. Than a, than a Red Bull can. And hello, Bungalow! I just noticed you. But yes, it seems that the battery I just pulled out of my vape device is 75 caliber. Or just under, barely. It's uh, right at about 71 caliber. So this is what a boulder shoots. Not Red Bull cans. Yeah. Yeah, they talk up the people, the fanboys talk about how man they fire bullets the size of a red bull can that can blow apart tanks. No, they fire a, a better example is they're firing rifles that have, for all intents and purposes, rocket assisted shotgun slugs, 12 gauge slugs with a tungsten penetrator and rocket assist. It's not that powerful. Anyway. But yeah. So what did you think of uh, Egbert the Careless there, Bungalow? Do you ever watch any of Outside Xbox or Outside Extras videos like when they play D&D? Because &D? That, that, that's where Egbert's from. Oh, and yes... There are pistols that are chambered for 12 gauge. They are not allowed for anything other than self-defense against bears while hunting and target shooting. If you fire one of them against a human being, it is considered a violation of the Geneva Convention. Well, 50 cal, the machine, gun, the heavy machine gun you see, you can't shoot that at a person. If you did, it'd be in violation of the Geneva Convention. Oh. Some of you saw me sculpt this uh, a little over a week ago on uh, one of my Patreon streams. Uh, it is the Dwarven Druid. And I've got to say that this new Anycubic Photon, you can see the braids in the mustache. You can see the threads holding on the bone uh, chest piece. You can see the leg wraps. You can see the tendons on the back of the fingers and the teeth on the belt. Just wow. That's in uh, Anycubic Photon. They now sponsor me. And they do some... Um, they allow some amazing prints. It's, it's a resin printer, so it's a lot louder than... Or not louder. A lot uh, smaller than a typical, you know... Grab him. He's the first one I can grab than a typical FDM plastic print. Now this came out pretty good, but as you can see, nowhere near as good. And it's got a lot of detrius from the uh, print process all over him. Uh, let me guess, Mr. Square Peg. You entered Danny's contest, and you're trying to get as many people as possible to use your link to enter his contest, aren't you? <sighs> I also, this morning, took about an hour to whip up a kind of a weird thing. 
it's a um, the whole point of this particular figure is that you can use it you, you print it out and you put it next to your other miniatures so people can see the approximate scale because this is Chief Centimangler. Each segment of his spear is five millimeters tall. Go figure. Anyway, that is tonight's sculpt done in just under two hours. So, I would also like to say that I'm giving you guys, the two of you, a, a little bit of an advance warning. I have an idea for a Kickstarter. I'm getting some concept art now. I've got the actual ideas planned out. It would be, dare I say, Titanic. <laughs> yes. Anyway. So I'm going to go ahead. It's about time for me to log out because it's also getting kind of warm back in here. You see, I, I have the door closed to keep Ralph from coming in and going, Hi! How are you? Because he's, he's an annoying little kitty like that sometimes. So uh, I'm going to hold up my hand. And I'm going to do a finger countdown. By the way, anyone who's watching this on uh, YouTube, like an archive thing, don't forget to like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. Check out the, the the Discord. Oh, wait. That's down here for you guys. The Discord links and, and the Patreon and all that. For the pe people in chat, it's it's right here. Anyway, so I'm going to hold up my hand. I'm going to count finger count down to one. When I get to one, I can pop by. This is so that I can kind of catch up to the lag that builds. So... We're going to start with the five, a fur, a three, a two, and a one. Lag, lag, laggity lag. Bye-bye.